Hello Puzzle Solvers. I recently played really awesome CTF, which is a new British capture the flag platform made by some young information security enthusiasts. Generally it lived up to its name and I had a great time. I wanted to use this opportunity to talk about classical ciphers. If you're given some text encrypted by a classical cipher, first how do you identify which cipher is being used and then how do you solve it? There were a series of six challenges in this CTF which were based on this topic. Some people complained about these challenges saying they were very guessy and they were completely wrong. If you use logical steps and statistical tools, you could solve these challenges really quite quickly. And I'm going to show you how in this video. Starting off with number one, if we take this and we put this in this statistical cipher identification tool, which I will obviously link in the video description, it says very confidently this is a patristocrat cipher. Now, a patristocrat cipher is a form of monoalphabetic substitution. So each letter maps one to one with a, another letter in a substitution alphabet. There's a, a well known tool called QuipQuip which can solve these uh, patristocrat ciphers very quickly. And we're going to see that, make short work of this cipher, and we get to solve our first challenge. Now, before we continue, I want to quickly ask, how was it able to identify this as a patristocrat cipher? So using this tool called index of coincidence, this is a really important way to, to be able to see what kind of cipher you're dealing with. Is this substitution, transposition, substitution plus transposition, or something else? If you get a score in index of coincidence that's, that's, a, that's like 0 0.04 or below, you're basically looking at text which is has a very flat distribution of characters the frequency distribution is more or less even for every character and if it's close to 0 0.66678 or even above that then you're looking at something which is pretty much like natural language like english in this case it's very high and that's because we're just looking at some some english ciphertext with the letters replaced it still retains the same frequency distribution as English. So this will help us in the challenges to come. Number two, obviously we expect it to be a bit more difficult, but if we go into cipher statistics, it strongly identifies this as a uh, visionaire cipher, uh, pardon my French. So a visionaire cipher is similar to monoalphabetic substitution, except that it uses a key so when we calculate index of coincidence on this text, it's actually very low. It's, it's, it's close to random text. And that's because the polyalphabetic nature of the visionaire cipher, i.e. the fact that multiple letters which are the same in the cipher text can, can decrypt back to different letters in the plain text, confounds the overall index of coincidence score. But then you can use index of coincidence still to calculate the key lengths. So this strongly identifies let, uh, the key length 7 as having uh, the highest IC or an IC that's close to um, English. And the way that this works, it's saying, okay, seven letters in the key means that every seventh letter encrypted by the same shift will take, will calculate the index of coincidence of each seventh column and then combine that, sum up the index of coincidence altogether. If that's close to English, then we look like we're dealing with a visionaire, visionaire cipher which is what this Cypher Statistics website is saying. Obviously, this cipher has numerous automatic decryption tools on the internet as well. Um, and here it's worth noting that in the plain text we're given with, with the keyword traffic, uh, it's addressed to Rocco from Donny, which uh, could be useful cribs to help us in subsequent challenges. Challenge number three, what does Cypher Statistics say this time? Looks like transposition cipher because it's calling calling root transposition redefense and the nihilist transposition is the most common possibilities why is it saying that okay index of coincidence of this cipher is really close to english but possibly jumbled up which which is what a transposition cipher is with with no form of substitution and we can see that if we look at the frequency analysis here we're looking at a really um, high frequencies for ETOI, which are exactly the same as English. Now, solving these kinds of ciphers can be a bit annoying because there's numerous transposition ciphers. You can have row transposition, 
rail fence, side tail, column just column transposition. Eventually, you, you you can just try tools until it will give you uh, the 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 solution that you're looking for. So here it's identified a bottom. It starts from the bottom and uses a row height of five, and then that gives us the plain text. Number four is when it starts to get a little bit more difficult. A lot of people got stuck on this challenge. But once again, if we run an ID here, we're seeing uh, transposition ciphers, particularly the reader fence, which is like a keyed uh, column or row transposition cipher as being the most common. And um, index of coincidence, once again, says this looks just like English. And the thing that interested me here is we know we're looking for cribs, potentially Donny, Agent, Rocco. Looking closely at this first row here, kind of looks like we can get Donny by rearranging some of this and maybe Agent too. So at this point, I was thinking probably a manual approach would be useful here. There's the, found this online tool, Transposition Cipher Solver, where you can just uh, try a propose a key length, let's say nine, paste the cipher text in, and then rearrange the columns until you get something that looks right. But for, this doesn't look right at the moment because we have spaces here, which we don't want. I'm just going to write some quick Python to move the spaces of this cipher text. Uh, import regex, regex substitute. We'll take all spaces and replace with nothing in a perfect. So now paste that back in. Huh, looks like nine's not good enough to get Donny on the first row, but maybe ten. Now, if we rearrange this to get Donny, we eventually find um, we're left with I R A E, and that's no good. Can't really form any words out of that, or the, the following letters. But we can kind of see this looks like it could be meeting here. Could be meeting. So is Donny something meeting? Let's try bumping up the length to. 11 and then see now if we can get something a bit more interesting out of this Donny I uh, Donny I agree I think you can see that it just kind of jumps out at you and the great thing here is once we've arranged the top row properly the rest of the cipher just falls into place as you can see here this is actually a row transposition cipher because we're reading across the rows rather than down the columns so that is how you solve this cipher. First of all, you're tipped off that it's a transposition cipher, and then you just transpose it. <laughs> um, moving on to number five. Again, we're going to try cipher statistics, and it says bifid cipher. So what's a bifid cipher? Uh, bifid cipher is similar to a Polybius square, but it has a few more operations. So first of all, you kind of make a a transposition square so an A in the plain text would be mapped to 3 3 because that's the position that A is in but then you also take the rows and then you, you turn the, the, the these number coordinates back into letters in the in the square to form the cipher text so it's actually a pretty annoying one that's hard to solve by hand and might need to use a more powerful tool Let's also run this through index of coincidence and we'll see. Yeah, it's pretty, it's not completely random, but it's not, it's not very close to English either. Yes, yeah, so we know it's a, we know it's a bifid cipher. We know that a bifid cipher has some kind of a period depending on the uh, size of the square and the rows. And so if you look at the index of coincidence um, based on the key sizes again you can see that it quite strongly thinks the the IC is 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 better when it's 5 10 15 20 basically multiples of 5 that might be helpful for actually uh, knowing the period of bifid I had this tool here called crypto crack which uh, seems to have the ability to crack bifid ciphers if I take that and then set a period of 5 as suggested by the index of coincidence scores and I'll run that. It will use an algorithm called hill climbing, which basically tries random keys and then 
changes positions in them and if if the change position produced a plain text which uh, which 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 is has a better fitness score than what's been seen so far where fitness is is, is determined by checking how close this is to English using scores like index of coincidence and, and, and trigrams and quadrams, basically sequences of letters which are close to English. We see it will eventually find the best match, which in this case looks exactly like the plain text we are looking for. So there we go. Once again, quite a simple solve if by just getting told directly what the cipher is, finding out the period using the index of coincidence, and then plugging it into a well-known tool. So that brings us to the final challenge, the toughest one. Now, I must admit I spent a very long time on this challenge with my team and we wrote hundreds of lines of code and we went down a rabbit hole, a big rabbit hole, because this time Cypher Statistics tells us that it's a Gromark or possibly a periodic Gromark cipher. We got very hung up on this Gromark cipher, this idea it's a Gromark cipher. So if you're not familiar with it, like I wasn't, uh, it's, it's again, it's like a substitution plus transposition cipher with a few stages so it actually does quite a good job at resisting manual attacks um, also if we just again we look at index of coincidence here we'll find that it's yeah it's pretty much pretty close to random text it's 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 uh, not something that we can easily crack using using uh, substitution or transposition cipher tools so what this does here this grow mark cipher is you have both a key and a primer as inputs. First of all, you write the key across a row and then you fill in the rest of the letters of the alphabet. And then you look at the order of the letters in the key. So A is the first letter in the alphabet, obviously, and then E and then G. And then you number them and then you read off the columns. So first this column, then this column, then this column. And then that gives you your substitution alphabet. So that would just be a monoalphabetic substitution cipher on its own. And that's where this running key comes on to really make it complicated. So you take a primer, which is just five numbers, and then from that, you produce a whole stream of numbers. And you do that by taking the first two numbers and then adding, adding them together, then that gives you five. Next two numbers, three and four, that gives you seven. And then that gives you, you see here, two, three, four, five, two, and then five, and then seven, then nine. And you can just keep doing this and produce a long stream essentially a running a running key it will eventually have a period it, it will repeat itself but it, it as long as the cipher text is short it should do a pretty decent job and then what you do for encryption is you take the plain text letter t find that in the substitution table that's a q and then add on the current number for the index which is 2 and then you end up with n likewise with h you match that with s and then plus 3 gives you f so there weren't many actual implementations of this on the internet in Python. So we coded one up and wrote loads of tools for attacking this. And we found something interesting, which is this number they give you looks like it could be either the primer or the key. It looks more like it could be the key, but then they don't give you the actual words. And then without the primer as well, it's quite tough and possibly unfair challenge. But we found that if we use this number as both the primer and as and as the key, and then we, we, we find all possible words which could match that, we found that the word agency, as well as the word advanced, match this pattern that we are given, uh, 143526, it, that would work. And then it gave us the word agent as the first as the first letters of the plain text, and that looks great. That's exactly what we would hope to find as a, as a kind of crib to, to crack this. However, we weren't able to get anything out of the rest of the uh, the rest of the plain text, and we spent hours and hours tr tweaking the algorithm trying to find uh, anything we could anything we could do here. And this was frustrating because in the end, it turned out that this cipher was actually a periodic grow mark cipher which adds a further layer of confusion here because you have an additional letter shift where for each six letters of the plain text you are actually associating that with with a key letter which is then and then all of the letters under that key are then shifted along and so we were able to get the first the very first six letters correctly as agent 
but then in in subsequent uh, de decryptions we we weren't able to find anything but then after we got the idea this might be a periodic grow mark the solution occurred in seconds and i will show you how so once again crypto crack this tool it has a periodic grow mark solver and then if you enter this number as the key primer and then does a dictionary attack it will pretty much instantly find the <laughs> the cipher text um, sorry the plain text using the keyword agency which was the same one we managed to find through a very frustrating manual effort so once again quite a difficult cipher can be solved very quickly using the right tools 